Hello everyone, I'm Maurice Ashley and welcome to Expo Dubai and Game 8 of the FIDE World Championship Dubai 2021. We saw yesterday an interesting struggle, Nepo with the white pieces after a big loss against Magnus in Game 6. Everyone expected him to come out with an incredible game, maybe some aggressive novelties, but he did not play the kind of chess that he needed to, and Magnus was able to neutralize his entire advantage and end up with a fairly easy draw. Today, Magnus has the white pieces. With a point lead, there are two strategies. One, be conservative and just keep the lead and put the pressure entirely on Nepo. The other strategy is win the game, go for it, blow him off the board and virtually end the match. Given that Magnus is someone who is so incredibly difficult to defeat, this could just put the task on Nepo that would make it almost impossible for him to come back. That kind of strategy and gamesmanship will be on the minds of the players as they go into this pressure-filled game before the rest day. Expect to see a lot of excitement, a lot of fire, and we would hope a victory for one of the players. Let's get the game started. Today, more than ever, when the world comes together to create a better tomorrow. It's going to be... Magic. Oh. La magie. Magic. Magic with music. With architecture. With colors. Magic with celebration. With your safety. From here. There. And everywhere. For six whole months, day and night. Join the making of a new world starting October 1st. Want to play chess but don't know how to get started? Try chess.com. Play for free against someone at your level or challenge one of our friendly computer bots. Trying to improve your chess? Learn the Queen's Gambit and other openings with guided interactive lessons. Like chess but don't want the pressure of playing games? Chess.com has hundreds of thousands of fun puzzles to help you relax and sharpen your mind. Play your friends, make new ones around the world, follow the latest games and more. Sign up and play for free at chess.com today. Actually, it's, it's really a brilliant idea actually to have chess because we want chess to be mainstream. And this is a perfect opportunity for chess to be mainstream. We have hundreds of thousands of visitors. You have this coming near one of the entrances to the, the Dubai Expo. Of course, why not maximize the opportunity and get more people to see and understand what it is we enjoy about chess? I am so excited to be here watching this. I mean, seeing Magnus and Nepo and a lot of other great chess players here, it's amazing. The environment's amazing. I just love it. I'm super excited. I saw a world championship match in 2016 where Carlson beat Karyakin in uh, New York City. And so I promised myself I wanted to see another game and it happened to be in Dubai, which is a city I wanted to visit. So I bought tickets for this like eight months ago to come here. I'm very excited to be here. I came all the way from Barcelona just to see the game. The environment is amazing. Everything is amazing. Being here in the expo, it just feels great. If I had a prediction coming in today, I would um, predict another draw. But, um, you know, because I don't think Magnus is going to push the pace too much being ahead of you know, a point. So I think he'd be satisfied with a draw at this point. My favorite is Magnus. I think it's a lot of people's favorite and I would love to see him winning today. Oh, it's amazing watching Magnus play and seeing him live. It's just, you know, it's like a dream come true. He's a, he's a legend. He's the GOAT of, of chess, so it's, it's amazing. General Magnus uh, is very sharp and very universal. He can just play about anything and uh, his feelings for the position and f for the you know, chess will eventually guide him to, to the correct move and um, he can calculate, but he also has great intuition on where to, to move his pieces to, which is not a given, which is one of the most difficult things in chess. And well, then that's why he also makes the, the least mistakes. Um, he keeps great energy um, after 
considerable hours of play, I mean in a day but also in a tournament and he never seems to lack energy until the end of the game. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Maurice Ashley, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to game eight of the FIDE World Championship Dubai 2021. From Norway, the world champion, Magnus Carlsen. And his opponent playing the black pieces from Russia, Jan Mipomnishchi. Today we have a special guest making the first move, a former football star for Real Madrid, Michel Salgado. He will be playing the first move for Magnus. And with that, let the game begin. And game eight has begun, and we see Magnus keeping that pawn move played by soccer star Michel Salgado. He is a Real Madrid fan, so he must be thrilled to be able to keep this move on the board. And now the move pawn to e5 by Nepo, the same move so far that he played in game four of this match. We'll see whether or not they repeat moves, and we see Magnus there playing the move knight to f3, and will he play the Petrov or Russian defense? There he goes, he does play the move, a copycat knight move, if you will, but it looks like Magnus is deviating in the first time that we saw this. Magnus played knight takes pawn. Now he's pushing his pawn to the center, d4, a very popular alternative, and Nepo knows this move inside and out. He has captured the pawn on e4. Magnus now playing a bishop to d3, attacking the knight. Easy to defend, of course, the move d5, pawn to d5, protecting the knight. Easy move, all standard stuff so far. I would expect to see knight takes pawn now, and Magnus has done so. This is all very traditional in this opening. They've memorized all these moves, no question about it. Nepo just giving a little bit of a pause now before he plays his next move. And there it is, knight to d7. He's attacking White's knight on the e5 square, the knight that's in the middle of the board. He's saying to Magnus, what are you going to do with this piece as I'm threatening to take it? Magnus briefly pausing here, but 100% he's going to take the knight. There it is, just a simple trade. Knight takes knight, and we should see bishop takes knight happen next. This is just what we call book moves, all memorized, played thousands and thousands of times in history. But this last move, knight to d2, that's not a standard move in this position that I know. And Nepo giving a bit of pause right now, and he is taking the knight on d2. All the knights leaving the board early. That usually doesn't give an advantage. You like to keep various forces on the board to keep it sort of imbalanced and Nepo now trying to stay cool trying to stay calm but he knows full well that this is something unusual this is something that Magnus has prepared and he's trying there you see drinking a little bit of whatever is in that cup trying to stay calm because Magnus has planned this line specifically for this moment We've seen a couple of moves, bishop to d6, and Magnus has castled his king, gotten his king to safety, and he's just confident now. He's getting up from the board, knowing that he's caught Nepo in a very tricky position. Nepo deep in thought, spending some time here, trying to figure out exactly what to do, because this is a tricky one indeed. And he's got to make the right move, and whoa, pawn to h5. This is not a move you normally play, pushing a pawn on the side of the board. Nepo looking calm and cool. A stunning move. Magnus is gonna have to react to this one. 
definitely a strange move in this position. Who knows how the game's going to go? If everybody in the it's Expo 2020 loved everybody in the world, what a glorious world this could be. The culture, the music, the artwork, is the people. Come on and join us. A new world is just beginning. I don't know, playing young uh, in general uh, has never bothered me, but in general I'm not bothered by playing uh, other players uh, from the elite. It's, you know, what I want. It's what I, I play for. So, in general, I like playing against Jan. Um, sometimes he does some faces, but uh, generally uh, it's actually a good sign because it means that, uh, you know, something's not going uh, how he wanted it. I mean, he might still have a very good position, but something's bugging him. So, actually, that's uh, generally quite a good feeling for me. I think, in general, Magnus is... The, I mean, it's not very expressing emotions uh, over the board. I think uh, his moves are what, you know, you should be scared of. And, uh, well, in general, what happens is if I didn't consider a move that he's making, then, you know, I mean, unless I know it's a blunder, and it can happen, like, it can happen that it's a blunder, but... Otherwise, uh, I know that I'm stepping into very dangerous territory, you know. So it's time to refocus and, you know, see what, what his idea could be, because there's always one. Uh, it's unfair to say that, you know, because they are top, top of, this, um, of this game, and uh, it will be... You know, Magnus is a special guy because, you know, uh, he's been a special for the last years. But in the end, um, I'm not going to cheer up for one of them. I just wish them all the best, you know, for this final. And to be honest, I'm going to enjoy both of them. I think the result of today's game will be decisive. I'm not sure who's going to win, but I see that the challenger is definitely pushing the pace. So I'm looking forward to seeing a nice result. It's been a very interesting game. It's a tough. You can see in both players that there's tension. So it's very, very interesting. So coming into today's game, I thought Nepo would actually go for a quick draw because the day off tomorrow and with him having the white pieces the following day might give him a slight mental and physical advantage. But that's what I was thinking. But I think I'm clearly wrong right now. <laughs> Magnus Carlsen confused by that last move by his opponent, that pawn to h5. He's been sitting there thinking now for over 30 minutes on one move. That's simply extraordinary from a player of this ability, but he does not know what to do about this move. He's just simply confused. And finally, he has played queen to e1 with check offering the possibility of queen to e7 and a trade that looks like almost a tacit draw offer not an exciting move he's getting up from the board but he looked a little dejected as he walked away this move should not cause nepo any trouble at all Both players now back at the board and Nepo has been thinking for some time about this queen move and he should just block with his queen. It just seems like a simple enough move, but he's moved his king. You usually don't move your king this early with that kind of move. Usually you want to castle, but Nepo moving his king out of the way of that check that doesn't seem like a great idea. And Magnus now playing bishop to b4, offering a trade of bishops not anything dangerous right now i would think just play queen e7 and deal with this threat seems simple enough for nepo he's not going to think too long over this move and there it is queen to e7 keeping things solid looking to trade off more and more pieces and bring this game closer to equality and possibly a draw
Magnus has been thinking about this move, but he should be trading bishops. That's just a simple idea, a good idea here. And there he is, he's just taking the bishop on d6. Good capture. Nepo will have to take this bishop back. We see him coming to the board. There should be little hesitation here. The best move is to take that bishop with his queen, and he has done so. And this position, even with that funny king on f8, looks to be pretty solid for Nepo at the moment. There'll be some tricky business to try to work out, but it looks like he has a good position. We're at move 21, and the position looks slightly uncomfortable for Nepo. The trades have not necessarily all gone perfectly in his favor, but he should be more or less okay. Magnus is threatening to move his queen all the way to the side and play check and win the A pawn, but this move, B5, pawn to B5, attacking the bishop, but doesn't that still allow this check? Queen to A3 check seems extremely powerful this move looks like a blunder. Nepo getting up from the board as though he's confident, but Magnus must be shocked. He's frozen there because he did not believe Nepo could play this move. It doesn't look like a good move. Magnus seems to have a winning line, a move that will win him a pawn. Will he find it? Will he play it? This could change this match completely as Magnus looks like he could play a devastating blow and take a two-point lead. Today, more than ever, when the world comes together to create a better tomorrow, it's going to be magic. Oh, uh. La magie. Magic. Magic with music. With architecture. With colors. Magic with celebration. With your safety. From here. There. And everywhere. For six whole months, day and night. Join the making of a new world starting October 1st. If everybody in the world. Expo 2020. Love everybody. Everybody in the world, what a glorious world this could be. It's the culture, it's the music, the artwork, it's the people. Come on and join us. A new world is just beginning. It's gonna be another crazy match, you know. Actually, they told me that uh, eight towers. They, they 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 were playing eight towers, you know. So when when you ask me about uh, chess and they say no, physically it's nothing. Imagine eight hours of of game. Uh, you know, they're demanding uh, not only mentally but physically to be in there eight hours in terms of energy and everything. If you are not fit, you cannot do that. So it's amazing to see these guys. That's why they are top top in the world. It's the same if you are comparing this with Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo and these guys, you know. These are the guys that we are talking about. So it's crazy to see them. Every moment, every moment that they are in there making movements and thinking and getting back to the room and getting back in there and thinking for 30 minutes just for one move. It's crazy, it's crazy. So um, I think we, you can learn a lot, you know, watching these guys. Um, you know, I think Nepo made a mistake earlier on with his, um, you know, when he um, played bishop d6, so he's trying to push it for h5. Normally Petrov ends in draws, but I see this maybe having a decisive result with his h5 pawn push. I don't think Magnus will coast the rest of the way, but the win that he had in game six, the eight hour bloodbath that we all witnessed here, I was here till 12.30 in the morning watching the end of it. I think that gives him a comfortable mental advantage and physical advantage that he can coast into getting the required points to win the match.
This is an incredible moment in world championship history as Nepo has played a move that looks like a complete blunder. Magnus cannot believe his good fortune and he's been thinking for some time, but there's the move. Queen all the way over to the side of the board to A3, giving check to the king, but also attacking the pawn straight ahead. He's going to win that pawn. You cannot give Magnus Carlsen a free pawn and expect to survive. This is a huge mistake by Nepo. Magnus knows he just has to stay incredibly focused and he will take home the full point. What a situation for this match and Nepo has not come back to the board in eight minutes. Here he comes back now. He must be absolutely devastated realizing that he made this incredible blunder you don't see blunders like this on this level of world championship play. And Nepo knows he just played one of the worst moves of his entire career. He must be sick to his stomach, disgusted by that last move. What is he supposed to do now? How is he going to defend against a confident champion? We see Magnus getting up there from the table, knowing that he's got Nepo in big trouble. And there he goes, moving his king out of check. This is not gonna help him. This is absolutely not going to help. Magnus certainly will take the pawn and you see Magnus rushing back to the table. He will study the situation, but this is so bad. You just don't give Magnus Carlsen a free pawn. That's just ridiculous. Magnus now settling in to really be laser focused. We see Jan there taking a sip, but <laughs> that might as well be poison because he's going to lose this game if Magnus plays the move. And there it is. Magnus Carlsen now up a pawn, ripping that pawn off the board, giving Magnus a pawn. That's like a pot of gold. He is going to nurse this position. It is simply a devastating advantage for Magnus. And Jan knows it. This game is virtually over. Nepo now back at the board. His stomach must be churning. He's simply hurting at this stage, knowing that he's given Magnus such a gigantic advantage. And he's played bishop to e6, offering to trade off pieces. Usually you don't offer trades when you are losing, when you are down material. And Nepo's down a pawn right now. That just shows his level of desperation. And Magnus saying, thank you very much. Let's get more pieces off the board. He's traded the bishops. And now rook takes. Magnus will no doubt capture that rook as well. And with all those pieces off the board and just the queens and pawns left, of course, the kings on the board, that's going to be a mathematical win for Magnus. There he goes, just getting rid of all opposition, making his life so much easier. This is a mathematical win for someone with the technique of Magnus Carlsen. And we see Jan just getting away from the board. He can't stand to stare at the mess that he's created. We're in the last stages of this game and Magnus has played it to perfection. Jan coming back, now he knows he's dead. He's just going to make his last try. He's played the move G4, pawn to G4. That's doing nothing at all. Magnus is just going to rip that pawn off the board, and that's going to be pawn number three that he's ahead. You can't go down three pawns against a player of Magnus's level and hope to survive. Pawn to H3, a last gasp. Maybe Magnus might not respond correctly to this move. Trying to open up the king in some way, but Magnus has so many moves. Looks like he can push his pawn to D6. Just push that pawn all the way down the board. Seems like a simple enough solution, but Magnus now just a little bit hesitant, and he's played queen to F3. That's beautiful, actually. Offering a trade of queens. Jan has to stop. That is it. Magnus Carlsen wins a second game. He's two points up in the match. What a commanding lead, a masterful performance by the world champion. He's now in the driver's seat in this match.
both of us were pretty pretty tired at that point, but um, it always helps to have the initiative in, in that case. To be honest, this um, this second win probably doesn't happen without without the first. Um, so everything is kind of uh, kind of connected. I think uh, in the beginning of the match, I got uh, quite some chances, uh, and uh, hopefully, if I uh, play well, I will keep getting these chances. Yeah, so it's um, it's about my own play, and uh, I don't think I should uh, think about the score. But uh, yeah, indeed, it would be better to have like an equal score instead of this one. But uh, we have what we have. The World Championship is 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 tough. Um, uh, you know, it's um, it's really brutal uh, emotionally with it with its up and ups and downs, and it's part of what makes it. Exciting and also extremely, um, extremely tough. The match clock is in 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 my favor. That's for um, that's for sure. All right. Well, that concludes the press conference for today. Tomorrow there will be no game. It'll be a rest day. The next day will begin at 16:30 on Tuesday. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great night. <laughs> <laughs>